The number you have dialed is not in service at this time. Welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. I'm Patrick Cristiano, your host, the publisher of TheaterLife.com, a website for theater buffs in New York City and the Hamptons. And today I have a really special guest, someone I just met at Guild Hall at the Grand Tour, the songs of Jerry Herman with Barry Levitt, uh, Valerie DiLorenzo, an actress and a singer. Thank you, Valerie. Thank you so much for coming today. Oh, it's, it's my a, pleasure. Oh, ditto. It's a pleasure. I mean, you had to go into New York for a show last night okay. at the actor Studio. How exciting. It, in that terrible storm, I went ahead and actor does what they have to do. <laughs> 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 it was a, um, a reading of a play by Diana Canova. Do you uh, remember her from, from, Soap. from Soap? Yes, yes, yes. Corinne yes. Tate, she was my favorite character. And um, she wrote a play called And I Always Will. And I did uh, a production of that in Connecticut three years ago. And then she called me at the last minute and said they were doing a reading. So I trudged into the city in the storm. Wow. It was great. Wow, wow, wow. But you, you had a successful run of the play before already. We did. So you're yes. going to do it again. How it was exciting. Very exciting. You. They want to bring you back. I <laughs> love it. I <laughs> That's love what the play. We always want to get too. to come back. <laughs> <laughs> it's a well-written yeah. play, very fun. So, so it was really great meeting you at Guild Hall. Thank at you. The songs you of too. Jerry Harmon, and we had it was so sad. It was Barry Levitt's last performance. Can you believe that? We never know. No, you never know. And I mean, you were going to come back and do it again. And we did. We were. Um, this was part of a new series, um, Standard Fair, to bring the composer lyricist series back, kind of modeled after Ninety Second Street Y, mm -hmm, lyrics mm -hmm, and lyricists, mm -hmm. which Barry was a part of. Right. And. Um, Interestingly enough, we were supposed to do the show in July, and then we the date got changed. We did it in September, and who knew that that was going to end up being Barry Levitt's final public performance? But it was very special, and we have to take that memory with us. We had a great night. Everybody was entertained. Yeah, it was lovely. He's a lovely, lovely, oh, great. gracious gentleman, and you've done so much work with him over the years. I mean, it's a tremendous loss to you. It must be. It is. It is. We were together for almost 12 years. And we started working together. Uh, we did a, oh my gosh, we did a musical, a Valentine's Day musical review 12 years ago at the old field club in Long Island. And that's how we started working together. And we've just been, became very good friends. And so, yeah, it was quite a loss. Well, you are a very, very busy young lady. Yes. Uh, and you've got a lot of stuff going on. But, you know, I was looking over your website, and I just want to tell the people some of the roles <laughs> that you have done. I want to write them all down. You were Rose and Gypsy. Yes. Sheila in Chorus Line, Nancy and Oliver. Twice. Twice. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Hannigan and Annie. Mm -hmm. Stella Deems in Follies. Miss Mona in The Best Little Whorehouse in oh, Texas. Yay. And Bunny, oh, I love this, in The House of Blue Leaves. Oh, I of love these, that part. One of my favorites. Oh, one of my favorites. I mean, I, I, this is only a few of them, people. There's, I, I picked out the highlights. <laughs> There's some others that I didn't write down just because they were less you people would know them as well. Uh, you've created original roles as well, and, and you sing. I have. And, and yeah. I, I, you, you have a show coming up, but before we get to your show coming okay. up, I want to just give our guests a little taste of what you do. And we have um, a, a Bernie Bierman song that you performed, Anything for a Laugh. Yes, so Bernie Bierman. Can we have that? You got me where you want me. Right in the palm of your hand So I helplessly cling Like some puppet on a string Never knowing where I'm going to land You go around and tell them all How easily you made me fall
yay, Bernie Behrman. <laughs> Such a great night. That was night. terrific. Such a great that man. was terrific. He's lovely. He's a lovely man. I, I, yeah. I met Bernie Behrman when he was 99 years old, original Tin Pan Alley composer. And we had a friendship for the last five years of his life. He passed away at 104 five years ago. And we did this retrospective at the Metropolitan Room in oh, the wow. city. Of Is that how you music. met him at the Metropolitan That's Room? That's how I met him. Uh, how did you get tagged for that? Because I, oh, you know what? Again, uh, serendipitous situation. I was going to meet Barry Levitt at a studio in Manhattan to go and work on just music. And while we were meeting, Bernie Bierman uh, passed by and Barry said, oh, Bernie, this is the girl that I was telling you about. And so Bernie said, good, put her in the show. Oh, <laughs> just like that. Just like that. Wow. And then we became friends and we used to go out for lunch once a month. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and he would play all of his music and then he eventually uh, gave me a, a bunch of songs to record for him, which was really nice. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, so you, ha you, have a f you have quite a few CDs, I understand, as well. I have two CDs and I'm working on a third one right now. So what are the, what are the two you have? The two that I have, one is called uh, Love is on the Next Train, mm -hmm. and then the last one is Until Now, and that was the one that Barry and I did together. And Barry and I were supposed to have uh, begun into the studio to record this new one. Unfortunately, he passed away. I'm looking for a new musical director, and we're going to move forward with it in his honor. Oh, wow. So you'll dedicate it to him. Absolutely. Oh, how, yeah. how lovely. How yeah. lovely. Yeah. So, so what's, what, what is it, the new album? I'm very excited. It's can you talk about it? I can. Um, the working title is Fire Sign, uh -huh. because I'm a fire sign. <laughs> and what sign are you? I'm a Leo, August 1st. Okay. When's your birthday? I, I'm, a, I'm a Libra. Well, actually, I'm Virgo on the cusp of Libra with Libra uh -huh. rising, and I have, I have seven planets in Libra, so I kind of am overwhelmed with Libra. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah, that's a whole other show. What's your rising sign? My rising sign is on the cusp of Gemini and Cancer. Oh. And then my moon is in Taurus. That's what keeps me really... Grounded? Grounded. And where does the moon fall? <laughs> you don't know. I don't know exactly, <laughs> but astrology is a big topic of mine. Uh, me too. It's yeah. one of my hobbies. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah, no, my friend I was telling you about is one of hers too, but my friend Morgana that I was mentioning too. But yes, yeah, so we'll have, let's not bore the viewers with okay. astrology. <laughs> let's keep them. But, but you, but, so, so you have a lot of stuff coming up. I do. Um, the first thing you are doing a show, let me see. The Ladies of Liberty, yes. which you are doing with Amanda Jones. Amanda Jones is a uh, East Hampton native, and she's a musical director in the schools and for many of the um, community theater productions out here. She also accompanies um, some other artists. And in February of this year, I was approached by the Rogers Memorial Library, League of Women Voters, Southampton Arts Center to curate and perform the show uh, celebrating the 100th anniversary of the women's right to vote in New York State. Oh. <laughs> How about that? That's a mouthful. Cool. <laughs> and it's been an amazing journey, Patrick, because uh -huh. it, I, I didn't want it to just be about that because uh -huh. there's so much that went into women winning the vote. Right. I really wanted it to be more starting with that as a jumping point, but then moving on to other ways that women have a voice, their empowerment, and, and where we are today. So mm -hmm. it's, been a, it's been a great journey and I'm very excited about the show. So, so what kind of songs do you do in this show? Some old-fashioned songs right from the period that were, um, that were actually written for the suffragettes, Sister oh, wow. Suffragette and the Anti-Suffrage Rose. There were also a number of song parodies that were written specifically with um, suffragist um, movement words, uh, parodies to like America, Battle Hymn of the Republic and um, Old Lang Syne. But then there's a couple of new tunes, some modern stuff like You Don't Own Me and It's a Man's World <laughs> that are very fitting for the topic. I promise it won't be male bashing, but we kind of do have to talk a little bit about the fact that men didn't want this to happen. Well, <laughs> some of them didn't. <laughs> some of them didn't. <laughs> but it was a majority, I agree. Right. But no, no, it's just you and Amanda? It's just Amanda and, and, and I. And what kind of accompaniment? A man is going to play the piano. Oh, okay. So, oh, so she plays the piano and yeah, you sing. Yeah. Oh, how, how terrific. Now, this is Sunday, November 19th at South Hampton Art Center, uh, 3 p.m. Yes. And then you're going to reprise it at the Montauk Library on Sunday, November 26th at 3 p.m. That's exactly right. And then after that, uh, the League of Women Voters representatives are looking to bring it into some of the schools, Pearson, East Hampton, because it is, it is an educational as well as an entertaining piece. Mm -hmm. 
Well, how cool. Yeah. That's, that, that's, and, and then, you, so you're juggling these performings, doing plays and doing albums and... <laughs> doing plays, doing albums, and then I'm involved in um, three new musicals as well at the same time. The shows that I've been af affiliated with for quite a while. Uh, what, what are they? Uh, one of them is uh, coming up in Miami next year. That's going to be called Love is Forever. And that's a, it's a love story about uh, a gentleman lost his wife and then he created a musical and it's actually quite good and I'm helping him dramaturg as well as be in the musical and that's going to be in, uh, in Miami next spring. I've been working on... Spring 2018? Spring 2018. Oh, how cool. I've been working with... Uh, an, so that's uh, not, the script isn't even finished yet on that? The script is not finished yet. What about the songs? A lot of the songs are finished. Mm -hmm. We're just going to put it into a different a little more cohesive, palatable way mm -hmm. to present it. So I'm working on that with him too. Um, I did, uh, oh, I've been working on a musical called Echo, which is, think, um, think Hunger Games set to music. It's an amazing musical that was written by Jenna Mate, who actually lives out in Quag, and Bethy Fowler. And it's really about how one young woman saves the earth from destruction all set to music. So echo. I've, yeah, Echo. And so I've been playing the mother in that. We've done. So that's a, that's a finished script, or is that's it a, a finished work in script? And that debuted at the New York Music Festival this past July. New York Music Festival in New York. Yes. And where will it go? Is it going someplace from there? So that's it's in process of where it's okay, going from it, now it, on. You know how these yeah. things are, <laughs> it takes, right? Sometimes it takes five years. Sometimes five years, <laughs> right? <laughs> and then um, I did minimally a, too. <laughs> oh, and then um, and then Diana's play, which is "And I Always Will," mm -hmm. which is again still in progress. But now, when did you do Diana's play originally? Three years ago. Where? It, uh, at the Wilton Play Shop in Connecticut. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. And how did she, she, how did she find you? Well, uh, you know, again, serendipity, because Diana lives next door to one of my very best friends, Don Bovenglow, who's been in uh, the, the business for years, mostly TV and film. And uh, Don and I met. We became friends. And... He called me up one day and said, my neighbor is Diana Canova, and would you mind you know, coming and reading this play? And I'm like, Diana Canova. <laughs> because I loved her, as I mentioned earlier, and I yeah. loved her character so much so that when I was confirmed, uh -huh. my confirmation name is Corinne, based on her character, character Corinne Tate. So when Don called me up and said, would you come and do this? I was like, oh my god, it's Diana Canova. <laughs> so I went to her house, and we did the reading. and. She, she wanted me to stay, and, and I, I became a part of the production. And then after that first rehearsal, I said, I have got to come and tell you that I'm a fan. So we took some pictures, and I still get a little starstruck, you know, how uh -huh. it is. And uh, so that was really fun. Oh, how cool. How cool. So, yeah. so you, have, you have three projects going, but you're going to first do the Ladies of Liberty. Ladies of Liberty. And you're going to do them in Southampton. Yes. And then in Montauk. Uh, yes. In your first upcoming projects. So we have another, I, I want to show there audience and another oh, good. side of you. Uh, this is a Noel Coward song, uh, If Love Were All. Oh, one of my favorites. Can we have that? Somebody splendid really needed me. So 
I love No Coward. You love I love No Coward. No Coward. Oh, too. Who doesn't love No Coward? I did his review, O oh Coward, back in Killington, Vermont. That was like one of my first professional shows. It was at a place called the Green Mountain Guild, and Meryl Streep had actually worked there. It was one of her first professional jobs, too, many years before. Mm -hmm. Following in Meryl's steps. Following Streep's. in Meryl's <laughs> steps. How about that? That's cool. Uh, so, I, have you ever done any of his plays? I haven't done any of his plays. I think that would be really fun. Yeah. The material is oh, so fun. Uh huh. I could see you in a null count. Oh, I, I did private lives. You probably. Oh, okay. I was going to say that would be a perfect fit for you. <laughs> I love it. Well, Kevin Klein. <gasps> did it you was, see Present Laughter? Yes. I did. I worked on that one too. You did? <laughs> oh, my gosh. But, Ke but Kevin Klein was like, he was like the the epitome of that character. I know. Did you get to see it? I did. It was phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. He's I, terrific. And we were really lucky that night. We were invited backstage by the producers and we got to meet everybody, but we also got to go on the set. <gasps> the set was oh like, oh my, my gosh. God. It was, I went up the stairs to come down the stairs on the set just to, to <gasps> imagine you know, coming. It was fabulous, absolutely fabulous. This but, June, I got to go uh, when I went to see Sunset Boulevard. I had the same experience. I got to meet Glenn Close, oh, cool. but I got to go on the set of Sunset Boulevard. Isn't that it was so exciting. It's just so interesting. So, I got to meet all of the cast. A friend of mine knew the hairdresser. So oh, I love that. that. that, that it's exciting. Now, now, after you do these shows, though, we, you have something coming up for the holidays I at do. the Rogers Memorial Library. Yes, I do a holiday Hamptons cabaret every year. Sunday, December third. Sunday, 3rd, December third at three. At three p.m. Three p.m. And that's free, that's and you. it's open to the public, and it's just me, and I'm doing that with Amanda again this year, and uh, I'm very excited. Everybody loves the holiday show because it's very warm and it's very sweet, and I, I do things to kind of cater to their tastes. I like to sing songs that that particular population likes to hear. So, what will you be doing there? Um, a lot of um, like 40s kind of uh, I'll Be Home for Christmas, White Christmas, P.S. I Love You. They love that kind of dreamy classic music. And then I throw in a few comedy songs to make them, to make them laugh. What do you do for comedy? Well, if I told you, it's going to ruin the surprise. Oh, oh, oh okay. No, oh, no, 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 it's supposed to be a surprise. It's a don't tell surprise. me. Don't tell me. I don't want to. Uh, people. People love surprises. They love the surprise. They, they, it brings out the kid in them. Right? Although I love Santa Baby, you know, the Eartha Kitt song. That's oh. one of my favorite <laughs> songs. And, oh, I've just discovered this great Elvis tune, Santa, cause Santa Claus is back in town. It's a really great bluesy song that Elvis wrote. I, mean, I don't know it. Um, well, you've been a real good little baby. The snow is falling on the ground. So it's got this nice little jump and down and dun dun underneath it. So I'm going to do that this year too. How'd you find that? My sister found it for me. Where? She is a recent Elvis fan. Oh. And she was listening to music. And every once in a while, my sister, who is not, she's not musical or anything like that, but she's my biggest fan. She'll listen to songs on the radio and say, you know, I think you should sing this. So one day she called me up and she said, I heard this great Elvis tune and I think you should add it to the Christmas show. So she heard it on the radio? Yeah. Because I've never heard it. Well, and you're going to hear it I, now. I'm, I'm, I, I like Elvis. He's really good. Isn't he great? Yeah, he was terrific. There was a new biography that just came out over the summer and it really opened me back up to Elvis. Uh -huh. I mean, he, he was a really brilliant musician. Good yeah. music. Yeah, yeah. Tragic life. Always underrated too, yeah, I think, because I they, think they so saw too. him as a sex symbol and swiveling the yeah. hips and all that kind of stuff, and they didn't focus on the other stuff about him. Another one that was really underrated was Janis Joplin, I think. <laughs> it's so funny that you're mentioning that because I, I teach a singing program. Oh, I and, wanted to get um, around to that. I'm sorry. And um, one of the we just talked about Janis Joplin because we were singing the song "The Rose," which was. The movie Bette that Lidler. was Bette Midler mm -hmm. and that was based on Janice's right. character, but it opened up a whole discussion about Janice, and a lot of people's perception was that her music was very, you know, drug infused and it was kind of hazy. And I said, no, that's not it at all. Exactly. She had these heartfelt, tender, really like rockin' lyrics that I think were very accessible. 
Yes, yes, yes. And, and, she, and, and also, too, I mean, like, you know, before, just before she died, she was all clean. I mean, I the know. fact that, That's I mean, and she, her, her music was not informed by any drugs. It was quite mm -hmm. the opposite. It was I like, know. it was a really, you know, even though she pushed over the edge, she, there was a controlledness to it. It was, I, I just, the reason I brought her up, I just discovered there's an old DeCavett show that she's on, and it's two months before she passed away, and she sings two songs on it, and they're in, like, Oh, you should check I'm going to have to look no, it up. Check it out, Dick Cabot, everybody. Uh, but we want to talk about Valerie some more, <laughs> I think. <laughs> Before we, I'm sorry to digress onto Janice, but I had a feeling. Oh, t tell me about your, your, that's what I wanted to talk about, your, your classes. Oh, you, the you singing program. So it's at the Southampton Arts Center now, which is, it's, the Southampton Arts Center is the old parish. Yes. And um, God, it's such a beautiful space. I love big high ceilings and kind of lofty spaces. So. Um, the singing program has been in existence for over four years. We've been at the Arts Center now for a little over a year. Mm -hmm. And I think I run it, gee, four times a year. It runs in four and five week sessions. Mm -hmm. There's a class that happens in the evening in which people can come and they, they work on their own individual songs with coaching from myself. I mean songs that they pick? Yes. Okay, so so they're, they're already songs that they, they're not, so people, do people bring any new music that they've written? That's where I was it's going. It's not any original music. Okay. It's songs that are in existence. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. sometimes I pick if they want me to. And uh, it's a great class. There's usually yeah. 12 to 14 people in it. And it's, w they work hard. They are they beginners, really advanced? All different so, ages. Oh, I different mean, ages. people can come? Anybody who wants Anyone to take this class come. could come? Anyone can come. So at any level. So, so what's your website? You have a website, right? My website is www.valeriedilorenzo.com. And one I'm also time, on www.valeriedilorenzo.com. Right www so if you want to find out anything about Valerie, you go there and you can find out about all the stuff that she's doing. If you're interested in taking a class or expanding your vo vocal range, you know, I'm sure Valerie Yeah, it's will. a great class. <laughs> and we have an afternoon classes for, that's more geared towards group singing. I get that more for seniors, uh, people who are free during the day, although I had a group of moms that came. And that one, we just work on group singing. So we learn harmony and we learn counter melodies. And those are also, uh, again, four times a year. I also have a Facebook fan page. God help me, I joined social media about six months ago. And that's just my name, Valerie DiLorenzo. OK, so you can, you can find Valerie on Facebook, too. <laughs> <laughs> She's a real person. Friend me, friend not, me. Not a fake person. <laughs> I, it's so hard not to be. I don't I know. know. I, I, I do my best to rein myself <laughs> in and not go there. But I'm a human being. What can I tell you? <laughs> Let me see. So we've. You, so when do you go into the studio for your uh, new, new album? You, I like to still call them albums. I do, too. Because um, we're still going to actually, you know, you still press a disc, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. um, well, we're a little bit delayed because of Barry's untimely death. Oh, we have to get you a new musical director. So I'm working on finding a new musical director. And um, I'm really leaning towards doing the recording out here with Cynthia Daniels. I did a project with her earlier this uh -huh. year. It was, a, it was music for yet another new musical that was coming out and I met Cynthia and I really connected with her. I mean, what's not to connect with? She's a I don't know. She's a Grammy Award winning record producer and she's got a studio in East Hampton called Monk Be You don't know her? No. Oh my god, she's You'll amazing. You guys me. have to get together. Uh, please. So, um, <laughs> I have a couple of people in mind that I'm going to uh, interview and do some music with and see oh, which it'll, one's going to be the out. fit. Yeah. It'll, so it'll all work I'm, out. I, I kind of digress. And actually, I want to go off the air. We have like about a minute uh, of Now and Then, uh, another Bernie Bierman song. Yes. Uh, we're just going to give them a little taste. Can we go with Now and Then and then roll to the credits? Now and then I think you'll come to me star that for me there would be no romance I gave you my heart in return for a song and a dance 
But then my will turns to dust Have you, I must Though it's just for now Not in service at this time.